Tupac Shakur was one of the most talented, influential, and controversial hip-hop artists of all time. His music, which spanned various genres and styles, addressed social issues such as poverty, racism, violence, and injustice. He also pursued a successful career as an actor, starring in films such as Juice, Poetic Justice, and Above the Rim. However, his life was tragically cut short at the age of 25, when he was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. His murder remains one of the most notorious and, until recently, unsolved cases in the history of music. In this narrative, we will explore Tupac Shakur's early life, rise to stardom, murder, investigation and final solving, and his everlasting legacy. We will also examine how he shaped and transformed the hip-hop culture and inspired millions of fans around the world. Pac was born on June 16, 1971, in Harlem, New York, under the birth name Lesson Parish Crooks, but was later renamed after Tupac Amaru II, an 18th century Peruvian revolutionary who led an uprising against Spanish rule. His mother, Afini Shakur, was a member of the Black Panther Party, a political organization that fought for the rights and liberation of African Americans. His father, Billy Garland, was also a Black Panther, but he had little involvement in Tupac's life. Growing up with his half-sister, Sikiwa, and a half-brother, Mopremi, who would later become his rap partner. Tupac's early life was marked by instability and hardship, moving frequently with his mother and sister, living in different cities such as Baltimore, Oakland, and Marin City, growing up facing poverty, homelessness, violence, and drug abuse in his surroundings, also witnessing his mother's struggle with addiction and imprisonment. Despite these challenges, Tupac showed a keen interest in arts and education attending various schools that fostered his talents in poetry, music, theater, and dance. During his life, he performed in several plays and multiple rap groups. His readings were widely influenced by writers such as William Shakespeare, Maya Angelou, Niccolo Machiavelli, and Sun Tzu. Tupac's early life also exposed him to the realities of racism and oppression in America in which he experienced discrimination and harassment from the police and the authorities learning about the history and culture of his people and their struggle for freedom and justice. He developed a strong sense of identity and pride in his ancestral culture and a descendants of warriors and rebels. During his life, Pac took to becoming involved in general politics and activism, following the footsteps of his parents and mentors. Once joining the Young Communist League and participated in protests and rallies, regularly expressing his views and opinions through his music and poetry, which reflected his social consciousness and political awareness. Tupac's rise to stardom began in the late 80s, when he joined the hip-hop group Digital Underground as a dancer and a roadie. Pac soon became a rapper and a songwriter for the group before launching his solo career in 91, releasing his debut album, Tupacalypse Now, which featured songs such as Brenda's Got a Baby, Trapped, and If My Homie Calls. The album was praised for its raw and honest portrayal of the harsh realities of urban life, but also criticized at the time for its violent and profane lyrics. Tupac attracted the attention of both fans and authorities, who accused him of inciting violence and social unrest. While also facing legal troubles, such as being arrested for assaulting a police officer and being sued by the family of a slain officer who claimed that Tupac's music influenced the killer. Popularity and controversy continued to grow in the early 90s as he released more albums and collaborated with other artists. Signing with Death Row Records, a label that was dominated by the West Coast hip-hop scene and led by Suge Knight, a notorious figure in the music industry. He also formed alliances with other West Coast rappers, such as Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, and The Dog Pound quickly becoming a leading figure in the West Coast hip-hop scene and a rival of the East Coast scene, which was led by Bad Boy Records and its artists, such as Biggie Smalls, Puff Daddy, and Mace. The rivalry between the two coasts escalated into a violent feud that involved diss tracks, shootings, and deaths. Tupac was involved in several incidents that fueled the feud, such as being shot five times in a robbery in New York in 94, which he blamed on Bad Boy Records, and releasing Hit Em Up in 96 a song that insulted the notorious Big, Puff Daddy, and their associates. Also pursuing a successful career as an actor, starring in several films that showcased his charisma and talent, making his film debut in Juice in 92, playing Bishop, a troubled teenager who becomes involved in a robbery gone wrong. He also starred in Poetic Justice in 93, playing Lucky, a postal worker who falls in love with a poetess played by Janet Jackson. The filmography included his role in Above the Rim in 94, playing Bertie, a drug dealer who organizes a basketball tournament. 
His other films include Bullet, Gridlocked, and Gang Related, which were released posthumously. Tupac received critical acclaim and recognition for his acting skills, as well as nominations and awards from various film festivals and organizations. On September 7, 96, while attending the Mike Tyson vs. Bruce Seldon boxing match at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, along with Suga Knight and other members of Death Row Records. After the match, Tupac and his entourage were involved in a scuffle with Orlando Baby Lane Anderson, a member of the Southside Crips, a rival gang of Death Row Records. The scuffle was captured by the hotel's surveillance cameras and later broadcasted by the media. The group left the hotel and headed to Club 662, a club owned by Knight, at around 11.15 p.m., the crew were in a black BMW sedan, stopped at a red light at the intersection of Flamingo Road and Koval Lane, near the Las Vegas Strip. A white Cadillac pulled up to their right side, rolled down the window, and opened fire at them. Pac was hit by four bullets, two in the chest, one in the arm, and one in the thigh. Knight was grazed by a bullet in the head. The shooters then sped away, while Tupac and Knight were rushed to the University Medical Center of Southern Nevada. Tupac underwent several surgeries and was placed on a ventilator and a respirator. He was put into a medically induced coma and was heavily sedated, suffering from internal bleeding, respiratory failure, and cardiac arrest. Visited by his family, friends, and colleagues who prayed for his recovery. However, on September 13, 1996, six days after the shooting, Tupac was sadly pronounced dead at 4.03 p.m. The official cause of death was respiratory failure and cardiopulmonary arrest due to multiple gunshot wounds. He was 25 years old. For the next 27 years, the murder of Tupac Shakur remained unsolved, despite numerous investigations, documentaries, and books that tried to uncover the truth. Many theories and speculations emerged over the years, involving different suspects, motives, and conspiracies. Some of the theories suggested that the star was killed by the FBI, the Illuminati, or even faked his own death. However, none of these theories were ever proven or confirmed by any credible evidence or testimony by any means at all. A breakthrough in the case came in 2023 when a grand jury in Nevada indicted Dwayne Keffy D. Davis, a former gang leader and the uncle of Orlando Anderson, for the first-degree murder of Tupac Shakur. Davis was arrested near his Las Vegas home on September 29th after years of bragging about his involvement in the shooting. Dwayne, for some unknown reason, had written a memoir titled Compton Street Legend, in which he claimed to be the last living eyewitness to the crime and giving several interviews to media outlets, in which he admitted to being in the car at the time. According to the indictment, Davis was the on-ground, on-site commander who ordered the death of Shakur. They alleged had planned the attack as a retaliation for the fight between Tupac and Anderson at the MGM Grand earlier that night. It details how the plan had also hired two gunmen, DeAndre Smith and Terrence Brown, who were both members of the Southside Crips gang, and had provided them with a white Cadillac and a semi-automatic handgun. The indictment was based on various sources of evidence, including surveillance footage, ballistic tests, witness statements, and Davis's own confessions. One of the key witnesses was Greg Kading, a retired LAPD detective who had spent years investigating Tupac's murder. Kading had obtained a recorded confession from Davis in 2008 in exchange for immunity from prosecution. In the confession, Davis had named Smith and Brown as the shooters and had revealed details that only someone who was there would know. Davis pleaded not guilty to the charge and denied any involvement in Tupac's murder. Under questioning, claiming that his memoir and interviews were fictional and exaggerated to boost his sales and fame, Dwayne proceeded to accuse Kading of fabricating evidence and coercing him to confess, saying that he was innocent and was being framed by the police and the media. The trial is scheduled to begin in early 2024 and, if convicted, faces life imprisonment without parole or even possibly the death penalty. His arrest has been welcomed by Tupac's family, friends, and fans who have been waiting for justice for decades. His arrest has also been seen as a major development in solving one of the most notorious and mysterious cases in the history of music, and it needs to be seen if it has reached its conclusion, as many think further involvement of actors such as Sean P. Diddy Combs. Tupac Amaru Shakur left behind a legacy that transcended his music and his life, quickly becoming a cultural icon and a symbol of resistance, resilience, and creativity. Pac has influenced generations of artists, activists, and thinkers who drew inspiration from his words and deeds, while also touching the lives of millions of fans who related to his struggles and aspirations of something more. His legacy was evident in his posthumous releases, honors, and tributes. There have been more released albums after his death than during his lifetime. 
thanks to the large amount of unreleased material he had recorded during his time alive. Some of his posthumous albums include The Don Kiliminati, The Seven Day Theory, Are You Still Down, Until the End of Time, and of course, Better Days. Once appearing in hologram form at the 2012 Coachella Music Festival, performing with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre in honor of Pac's legacy. Over his life and after, receiving numerous awards and recognitions, such as being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2017, being ranked as one of the greatest artists of all time by various publications and organizations, including myself, and having several streets, schools, and monuments named after him, inspiring countless tributes from other artists, such as songs, films, books, documentaries, and murals alike. Tupac's legacy was also evident in his impact on music, culture, and society. He revolutionized the hip-hop genre with his distinctive style, voice, and message, while blending various musical influences, such as soul, funk, rock, and jazz, to create a unique sound that appealed to a wide audience. He also addressed social issues that were relevant and important to his community and his generation, such as poverty, racism, violence, and injustice. His life challenged the status quo and spoke truth to power with his lyrics and actions. He also expressed his emotions and vulnerabilities with his music and poetry, showing his human side and his complexity. Tupac Shakur was more than just a rapper or an actor. He was a poet, a philosopher, a visionary, and a leader. A man who will be remembered by phrases like, I'm not saying I'm going to change the world, but I guarantee you that I will spark the brain that will. And before we go today, let's take it upon ourselves to remember him by his own iconic words, only God can judge me.